Welcome to another Figma tutorial. In this video, we'll be teaching you how to make your prototypes more immersive through the use of scrolling and device frames. If you haven't watched our other videos about prototyping in Figma, you may want to check those out first. Let's get started. We're starting with a design from a social and travel app that was created using the Pixel 2 preset from the frame tool. However, you can see that our screens have gotten much longer than their original starting height as we've kept designing and adding more content. When your designs start reaching this level of fidelity, you'll find yourself wanting to create prototypes in the Prototype tab to evaluate the look and feel of the design. I've already made some connections between these frames for us to try this. If we click the play icon to enter presentation view, we can see that by default our frame is displayed at 100% so we can see our design at actual size. Any area of our design that overflows outside of the screen will automatically become scrollable. But this still isn't quite right. Our phone isn't actually as tall as our computer monitor, so this isn't a very good real-world representation. In addition, at the top of our design, we have an Android status bar that contains the time, battery, and signal indicator icons. At the bottom of our design, we have a navigation tab bar. When we start scrolling, the status bar disappears and the navigation isn't visible until we reach the bottom of our frame. In our actual mobile app, we would expect these to remain fixed as we scroll. Let's see how we can do that. We've opened two different windows side by side, one with our design and one with our prototype, so we can see both simultaneously. If we go back to our design, we can select our status bar component within the frame. Next, we can go over to the constraints section of the properties panel and check the option to fix the position when scrolling. Let's do the same for the navigation tab bar at the bottom of the frame. Because we want this element to remain at the bottom of the frame, let's also ensure that the constraint is set to bottom. If we look to the Layers panel, you can see that our two elements have actually moved to the top, and now they appear in a new section for fixed elements. Now, if we return to Presentation View, we can see that our navigation element appears at the bottom of the screen, despite us not having scrolled all the way to the bottom. If we scroll vertically using our trackpad or mouse wheel, we see that the remaining content of the design scrolls behind the elements we told Figma to fix when scrolling. Fixing elements isn't only for these types of applications. For example, it can also be very helpful if your app uses a floating action button, or fab, to keep it fixed and constrained to the bottom right corner. You may also notice that we have some elements of our design that go off screen. At the top of the first screen, in the Browse by Categories section, we have four different cards for browsing categories. We can see all of them by selecting our frame and unchecking Clip Content. Let's add horizontal scrolling to these areas so we can access all of the cards in our prototype. Right now, each card just belongs to the top level, parent frame, which currently scrolls vertically because of its length. In order to give this area a different overflow behavior to scroll horizontally, we need to first add them to a new frame. Scrolling overflow behavior is a property that only belongs to frames. We can select all four cards, then use the keyboard shortcut Command Option G to frame selection. This places all selected elements into a frame. Next, we'll go to the Prototype tab at the top of the Properties panel, where we can find the option for Overflow Behavior. Expanding the menu, we see four options, None, Horizontal Scrolling, Vertical Scrolling, and Both. We'll choose Horizontal Scrolling. You'll see that there is a warning icon displayed next to the dropdown. If we hover our mouse over this icon, we see that we currently don't have any elements of our frame outside of the frame's bounds. In order for scrolling behavior to work, we need to adjust our frame's boundaries so that some of its contents lie outside of the bounding box. Let's select our frame and resize the bounding box to be smaller. Now we can see that the warning has disappeared. If we return to presentation view, we can see that we can scroll horizontally in this area as well. Right below our scrolling categories, we have a series of calendars that overflow horizontally. The difference here is that this is actually a component. Luckily, since components are also frames, overflow behavior and scrolling also work. We can go back to the Design tab, select our calendar component, and then click Go to Master Component to find the master component. From here, we can return to the Prototype tab, then change the scrolling behavior to horizontal and resize our frame just like we did before. Now, our calendar will scroll in Presentation View just like our other frame. Next, let's take a look at how we can use the Both option for overflow behavior. If we scroll down to the middle of the home page, there's a section called Discover Things to Do, and if we click on the card for Surf Lessons, we're taken to a new screen with all of the details you would need to know about the event. A little bit down the page, we see that there is event location information, including an embedded Google Map. We'd like to simulate how a real embed functions, which would allow a user to pan around the map, 
or in other words, scroll both vertically and horizontally. Let's return to our design and select our map element. This time, we've already placed the map image inside of a frame. If we toggle the Clip Content checkbox, you can see that the image is already much larger than the frame, and was just being clipped by the frame. This means we won't see that error from earlier. With the frame containing our map selected, we can go back to the Prototype tab, and this time we'll choose both for the overflow behavior. There's also an area overlaying the map that gives additional details of the location. We don't want this to scroll away with the map, so just like we did before, we can select this group and check the Fixed Position When Scrolling checkbox. Let's do the same for the Google branding in the bottom left corner. Now, when we return to Presentation View, we can scroll the map in both directions as if we were panning. This prototype is looking really great, but we can make it look even better by using device frames. If we return to our file, make sure we're in Prototype tab, and click into the canvas so we have nothing selected, we can see in the side panel that there is a section for Prototype Device. If you recall, we mentioned that we began designing with the Google Pixel 2 frame preset, so let's go ahead and choose the Pixel 2 from the drop-down menu. We now see our prototype is wrapped inside of a Google Pixel 2 device frame, making the experience more immersive. Let's review what we've learned. Scrolling is only available for frames, but nested frames can have separate, independent scrolling behavior. Use fixed position when scrolling to keep content static when scrolling. This is especially useful for headers, footers, navigation, and floating action buttons. Ensure that you have some contents outside of the frame's bounding box for scrolling to work correctly. Set the overflow behavior to horizontal scrolling and vertical scrolling to simulate the ability to pan around something like a map. Deselect everything while in the Prototype tab to change the prototype device to make your prototypes even more immersive.